Every kitchen produces organic waste, whether it's potato skins, old bread or wilted greens. It's a shame to throw that away, actually. These leftovers are a valuable resource, and NT can attest to this. Yes, indeed, Joy, they are. In the German capital of Berlin, waste collection services gather this kind of garbage. They bring the organic waste to a special facility to be turned into biogas, which is then used to power things like the truck that collects the waste. One big circle. Pretty cool, isn't it? Julia Nova does a lot of cooking. She has three children and a dog to feed. There are always some peelings or leftovers. Bits of red pepper, potato skins or carrot greens. In this household, the waste is sorted. One category is organic waste. It's a good thing. I don't mind sorting stuff. Refuse should be sorted and recycled. There's a lot of energy to be garnered. When the weather's warm, the organic waste has to be taken out before it gets smelly. About 80% of households in Berlin now have a separate organic waste bin. The city sanitation department empties the bins and takes their contents to the biogas plant. By the time the organic waste gets there, it stinks horribly. But the team here have got used to that. Wilhelm Winkelmann is in charge. He explains that the best kind of organic waste for his purposes stinks more. Food waste, which is rich in energy, unlike leaves and grass. Stuff that doesn't belong here has to be sorted out. Organic waste used to be composted. Compost can be used in fields or in flower pots. Compost, der dann auf die Äcker wieder kann oder in die Blumentöpfe. But there is also a lot of energy in organic waste. And we use a process of bacterial fermentation to access it. The plant uses bacteria to break down the organic waste. A mix of gases is released, including methane, which can be burned to provide heat or drive an engine or a turbine. The gases first have to be separated and cleaned. That involves cooling to remove the moisture. The resulting biogas, 98% methane, then has to be stored. Wilhelm Winkelmann helped design the plant. It's attracting a lot of attention. It could be a model for facilities around the world. But that might not be so easy. It took time and effort to create the legal framework for the biogas industry and its relationships to the utilities and other sectors. We can use biogas for heating, to generate electricity, to power a fleet of vehicles, or sell it on the market. We have a range of options because we have the right legal framework here in Germany. Other countries don't have that, and some don't have a gas pipe grid. The Berlin Sanitation Department runs 150 garbage trucks with the gas it produces. That's half its fleet, and thus saves two and a half million liters of diesel each year. Biogas can radically reduce greenhouse gas emissions compared to fossil fuels. It also produces much less particulate matter than diesel. So humble potato peels can, with some high-tech help, contribute to keeping the air clean. Now, honeybees are humans' closest natural allies when it comes to food production and plant diversity, yet they are under severe threat globally for a number of reasons, including pollution and climate change. Ivan Brown, a young industrial design student at the University of Johannesburg, has developed a unique beehive box. Bee colonies are dying worldwide in huge numbers. A cause for major concern also for beekeepers, whose existence is under severe threat. Begin is a new home for bees invented by design student Ivan Brown. He combined the structure of beehives with a man-made construction material, concrete. 
this is using lightweight concrete, this, this version, um, and the focus would be also for um, insulation because the bees use a lot of energy keeping the hive at a perfect temperature, and that energy comes from honey consumption. So if you're trying to produce honey and the bees are, are struggling to regulate the temperature, they're consuming a lot of honey and your honey production goes down. So lightweight concrete is an extremely good insulator. His swarm box is the product of three years of research and brought together the knowledge of traditional beekeepers with a South African concrete producer. There is no need for toxic paints to protect the box against harsh weather conditions, unlike with wooden beehives. Some of the biggest problems with wooden hives is that they don't last long enough, especially in our environment with fires and honey badgers and, and thieves and um, vandals. And so we're trying to increase the durability by using a more durable, um, long-term material. But also at the same time, we've managed to decrease the price of the hive itself and um, increase the ease of manufacturability. Mike Shapland has been a beekeeper for most of his life and is concerned that the little pollinators might soon disappear from our world. For the last two years, he has been taking part in Evans research tests to see if the bees adapt to the new boxes and has already seen big developments. They're certainly taken to it and they're working less hard. They're not working as hard. Uh, that makes a big difference because it means that the, a lot more of the bees can go out and forage rather than keep the hive cool. To date, I've never seen the, the, the um, bees actually bearding, which is a, a term where it gets so hot in the evening that all the worker bees move outside the hive to cool themselves down and allow them, the, the hive inside to cool. So far, Ivan's um, swarm box, they haven't had to do that. That enables the bees to focus their energy on honey production. Even and his research team have compared the output of a wooden beehive with a concrete variety and found that production went up by 300%. The student regularly reaches out to small-scale farmers. They are being provided with concrete swarm boxes as part of an urban organic farming initiative. The idea is for the farmers to eventually make their own new beehive systems. Although for now, they are expensive. I think the, the most complicated part in the designing of the, the system was achieving a balance between cost and durability and, we're, and starting out by working with low-income groups or low-income farmers, small-scale farmers, really puts a limit on you know, how, how wild you can go with the, the technology, but that also is a good place to start from because if you make it affordable for the, the novices and the entry level guys, then you're helping them in the long run. Once the Begin Beehive is ready for mass production, Ivan sees himself equipping local farmers with the molds, a precious tool that will help them become more independent. So ideally what I want to see is a farm like this one um, with Earl and Pile where they can produce their own uh, beehives, but also maybe have the equipment, the suits, and then start to teach others in the community how to, how to do it and, and get hives to their farms and then become a source for the knowledge for other people in the community. Ivan Brown is currently designing a new version of his concrete box. It's currently still a research project, but the team from the University of Johannesburg hope to launch it a few years from now across Africa. So, there are plenty of people fighting to save the environment in all parts of Africa and also in Europe, as we've seen in our report. But that's it for our show today. Bye-bye from Port Harcourt in River State, South, South Nigeria. And remember, for any views, comments or suggestions on our show that is Eco at Africa, you can log on to our websites and check out uh, what some of the other stories have been and also what ideas you can share with us but also you can visit our social media platforms i'm sure we all have mobile phones at least most of us check out our stories let us know what you think about them share them and also share ideas my name is joy Dorin bira it's bye bye until next time <laughs>